The next amendment is offered by Mr. Garamendi, number 108. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to pass on that. We're going to go to Mr. Perry, amendment number 387. The clerk. Amendment to H.R. 5689, offered Mr. Perry, number 387. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read, and I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you much, Mr. Chairman. I won't take five. But this amendment strikes Section 7 of the bill, the Residential Retrofit and Resilience Pilot Program. Unbelievably, but somehow believably, there is no federal nexus that I can see that should make the taxpayers liable for home remodeling for other people's houses. And don't make any mistakes. I know it says Residential Retrofit and Resilience Pilot Program. It's remodeling other people's houses, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen. The benefits of these programs are questionable, dubious at, at the very best. The argument that hazard mitigation funding pays for itself is based on the myth that extreme weather events are increased based on climate change. And this is simply not credible, and it is thoroughly debunked by the actual data on extreme events. And the fact that it pays for itself, let me just say this, you know, as long as we're handing out all this federal money, maybe because it's more expensive after the fact than before the fact, you can claim that it pays for itself. But I wonder where the private insurance market is in all this, as long as the federal government's willing to pay for everything. But I digress. If hazard mitigation actually produce the type of returns claimed by proponents, the market would incentivize private businesses to take action to mitigate said hazards and take on these retrofits themselves. Instead, this is federally subsidized flood insurance, ad hoc federal disaster relief, et cetera, which creates a moral hazard that prevents the market from effectively dealing with said risk. And it's not to prevail against people that suffer under hazards or even floods. I've been, you know, I've been, I've experienced being flooded out of house and home on more than one occasion. But paying for people to remodel their home at the federal government's expense, which is the federal taxpayer, which is every single citizen of the United States, is far, far, far from what the constitutional provisions allowing this federal government to be involved in dictate. And so with that, I would urge support of this amendment. Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance. The gentleman yields. Does any other member wish to be heard on this amendment? Hearing none, I yield myself as time as I may consume in opposition. I rise in strong opposition to the amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. The gentleman's amendment would strike a pilot program for block grants to states to help mitigate and retrofit residential properties, which is another area of bipartisan agreement between leaders of the full committee and the Economic Development Committee. As another, excuse me, subcommittee, as another effective investment in mitigation to ultimately bolster our nation's resilience in the face of severe and ever more frequent natural disasters. Many members of this committee represent constituents who have been displaced from their homes as a result of these disasters. Whatever the hazard, either seismic, high winds, or tornado activity, rising waters, forest fires, this program will provide assistance to states so they can decide which hazards to help homeowners mitigate. Along the Susquehanna River in the gentleman's district, that may mean investments by the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency in floodproofing homes with, within the special flood hazard area. But ultimately, each state will be in control of how best to mitigate against the most prevalent hazards that residents face. So I strongly oppose the Perry Amendment's attempt to strike this important provision, and I urge my colleagues to vote no as well. Are there any amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to please unmute. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. Mr. Chairman, I request a recorded vote. A recorded 
vote is requested and it has it will be postponed until a later time. Okay. We will now go to uh, Garamendi 108, the gentleman from California, oh, excuse me, the clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to HR 5689 offered Mr. Garamendi number 108. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this without objection, the amendment will con be considered as read, and I now recognize Mr. Garamendi to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment deals with an ongoing problem of trying to get the uh, hazard reduction okay. and mitigation programs done within the allotted time. Uh, the good news is that the uh, underlying legislation does extend to 84 months, the amount of time that is, necess that is available to uh, complete these projects. However, this amendment deals with the initiation of the projects, and that is the, uh, the re environmental review and other uh, reviews that need to take place before any construction can begin. Uh, I understand, uh, and therefore, I think it's a good amendment and necessary even in the context of the expansion that is uh, in the bill. However, I understand that the uh, chairman and ranking member are concerned <laughs> about this particular uh, piece of the legislation, and therefore, I appreciate the opportunity to explain why it's a good thing, but I will withdraw the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Garamandi. Our next amendment is also Mr. Garamandi, number 109. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, this amendment uh, deals with the uh, 428 program uh, this is a program that was supposed to be of assistance to uh, local governments, counties, particularly small counties, uh, and governments that do not have the money in their treasury to upfront the payment for the various repairs that are necessary following some sort of a disaster, federally declared disaster. Uh, the uh, proposal uh, is to find out why this program is not being used. Uh, what is wrong with the way in which this program is either administered or, or the law is written? It sounds like a great thing, 428, the money can be uh, fronted by the federal government and then uh, following the completion and audit being done uh, and uh, whatever's uh, not used would be repaid. However, for reasons that are not now understood, the program is not being used. Uh, therefore, this uh, simply calls for the GAO to study the program to try to figure out what is wrong, either with the administration of it or the base law itself. Uh, that's it. It's a study, and uh, if we can figure it out, there's no doubt this would be help very, very helpful, uh, the 428 program, to small communities and uh, counties that don't have a big bank account. Uh, with that, uh, I yield my remaining time. Thank you, Mr. Garamendi. The clerk will now designate the amendment for Mr. Garamendi. Amendment to H.R. 5689, offered Mr. Garamendi, number 109. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. Mr. Garamendi has spoken now. Uh, anyone else wish to speak on the amendment? Well, I, too, rise in support of this amendment offered by the gentleman from California, Mr. Garamendi. The amendment calls for the Controller General to conduct an assessment of FEMA's administration and the authorities this committee provided it in the Sandy Recovery Improvement Act. Public assistance alternative procedures was intended to reduce the red tape of FEMA's standard PA process, and 428 projects were administered and adjudicated as a pilot program until FEMA's former regulations and policy guidance regarding administration of the new authorities were released. Once the new regulations and guidance were released, alternative procedures were not nearly as efficient as they were during the pilot, nor were they in effect as intended by Congress. I thank the gentleman for offering the amendment. I look forward to supporting it. I think it will solve our problem and uh, urge my colleagues to do the same. Okay. Are there any amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating by Remote to unmute. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. The ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. 
Our next item for consideration is H.R. 5673, Safeguarding Tomorrow Through Ongoing Risk Mitigation Technical Corrections Act. Without objection, the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings, and Emergency Management is discharged from further consideration of H.R. 5673, and I call the bill up for consideration. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with, and the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for a statement on H.R. 5673. Introduced by Chair DeFazio, Ranking Member Graves, Ranking Member Webster, and myself, H.R. 5673 will make technical corrections to the STORM Act that was enacted in the 116th Congress. The STORM Act is a bipartisan and bicameral bill that created a hazard mitigation revolving loan fund that helps states and tribal governments finance mitigation projects. I strongly support investments in disaster mitigation efforts. It's a common sense way to save lives and property. The legislation corrects clerical errors in the enacted language of the STORM Act. I strongly support this legislation, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. I now re recognize Ranking Member Graves for a statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. H.R. 5673 is gonna make technical corrections to the Hazard Mitigation Revolving Fund um, which was agreed to during debate on this legislation on the floor in the 116th Congress. One, one key fix conforms the building code language to the previously agreed upon bipartisan language in the 116th House version of the STORM Act. I urge my colleagues to support it and yield back. Thank you. I now recognize subcommittee ranking member Webster for a statement. Thank you, Chair Titus. Uh, this bill recognizes and implements the latest two installments of the building code and allows uh, for local and tribal governments to make necessary amendments in the mitigation revolving loan fund created in the STORM Act last Congress. I urge my colleagues to support this bill and go back my time. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak on the bill? Are there any amendments to H.R. 5673? Mr. Perry has amendment number 378. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment in the nature of substitute H.R. 5673 offered by Mr. Perry, number 378. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. This amendment would repeal the Hazard Mitigation Revolving Loan Fund in Section 205 of the Stafford Act. The CBO estimated that this program will increase the deficit by $30 million. Now, I know $30 million seems like a small number when our majority party is demanding trillions in spending on top of the $6 trillion we've spent in the last two fiscal years. Every single dollar counts when the nation is $30 trillion in debt. This level of debt is unprecedented and it's unsustainable, presenting one of the greatest threats of all time to our national security and our prosperity. While proponents of this program will argue that the hazard mitigation funding pays for itself, that argument is based on the myth that extreme weather events are increasing based on climate change. That argument is simply not credible and has been thoroughly debunked by actual data on extreme events themselves. When even the Keynesian economists at the CBO claim that this will add to the deficit under their dubious assumptions and models, all members of Congress should give pause to arguments that the program actually saves money. If hazard mitigation produced these kind of returns, there would be a market incentive to make these investments, but there simply is not. Instead, we're throwing taxpayer money at dubious efforts to protect second homes and then backfill these residents with ad hoc disaster funding after the fact. The moral hazard created and the inability for market forces to work put these folks in a worse situation and actually forces the taxpayer to pay time and time again for these continuing issues. I urge adoption and support of this amendment and I yield the balance. Thank you. I rise in strong opposition to the amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. Last Congress, this committee reported out a bipartisan bill co-sponsored by several members of the committee who have been participating today to establish a resilience revolving loan fund program. 
to provide state, tribal, territorial, and local governments a non-competitive option for funding their backlog of mitigation projects. Based on the highly successful and popular revolving loan funds that this committee has helped establish for water infrastructure, this new program is intended to fund a full spectrum of mitigation projects to protect communities from all natural hazards. Then President Trump enacted this law at the beginning of the new year, and states have already begun taking actions needed to establish and administer funds. This amendment would strike all of that good work that has so far gone into providing another tool in the mitigation toolbox for communities that cannot repeatedly seek and then be denied a competitive grant. So I strongly oppose Amendment 378 and urge my colleagues to vote no as well. Does anyone else wish to speak on the amendment? Are there any amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute yourselves. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. 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 The ayes have it. The amendment is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Madam Chair, I wasn't going to request a recorded vote, but now I'm going to request a recorded vote. <laughs> okay. I, I guess I deserve that. All right, a recorded vote was requested and will be postponed until a later time. The next amendment is Mr. Perry, number 382. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to HR 5673, off by Mr. Perry, number 382. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I now recognize Mr. Perry for, to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Since you didn't like the last one, maybe you will like this one. <laughs> the tragic collapse of a condo building in Surfside, Florida this summer shocked many across the nation with TV shots of smoking rubble and twisted wreckage. Tragically, tragically nearly 100 people lost their lives. Investigations in the aftermath revealed evidence of rampant corruption and money laundering in the development of, condo, of the condo as early as the late 1970s. Numerous media outlets reported that the building's developers received shortcuts and offered payoffs to get around permit and zoning requirements. More recently, Miami Beach building director Mariano Fernandez accepted bribes of free or discounted rates at hotels in exchange for expedited permits and inspections for those hotels. Florida is not the only instance of zoning corruption. Zoning agencies in Boston and Los Angeles, Los Angeles have also been plagued with scandals involving kickbacks and bribery. Unfortunately, those incidents didn't, correction, fortunately, those incidents didn't lead to the same tragic loss of life and property as, as the Surfside condo collapse. My constituents in the 10th District of Pennsylvania should not have to pay for the hundreds of millions of disaster relief funds necessary because of corruption in other states. No, nobody in any of these other 50 states and the associated territories should have to pay for corruption wherever it exists. This amendment would simply require the GAO to report on corruption in local zoning agencies and their role in contributing to disaster declarations or the cost of disaster relief. So it's pretty simple, just a report, so we can do better job to do a better job here and stick up for our taxpayers and the safety of our citizens. With that, I yield back the balance of the time. Thank you. I rise in strong opposition to this amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. The amendment would require a report on, and I quote, the role of corruption in local zoning agencies in contributing to disaster declarations or the cost of disaster relief. Such a requirement is extremely broad and would amend a bipartisan bill that we have spent significant time on aligning with our Senate counterparts. If the gentleman is interested in refining the request for such a report into a product that is something that can actually be scoped by the Controller General, it's fair to say that we would consider co-sending that formal request, which, as the gentleman knows, does not require statutory action. So I, again, I oppose the amendment and encourage my colleagues to do so as well, but offer to work with the gentleman. Does anyone else wish to speak on the amendment? 
Are there any amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to Ma Madam Chair, can you, can you restate your offer? Can I do that? Uh, yes. If the gentleman is interested in refining the request for such a report into a product that is something that can actually be scoped by the Controller General, it's fair to say we would consider co-sending the formal request which, as the gentleman knows, does not require statutory action. So you're asking me to withdraw the amendment, and in return, the chair would, would with me, request that the Comptroller General make the same report. Is that your... Well, it would take some refining. It can't be just exactly as written because that's overly broad and is contrary to the bill that we've worked with the Senate on. But we could ask for a report and work on the language together. Well, but the, the amendment is before us now, and okay. I won't have time to, if I withdraw it, I won't have time to refine, as you say, the amendment to, I'm sorry? We would, it wouldn't be an amendment. It would be a separate letter, which that's what, doesn't that's what, I, that's what I thought I said. That's well, what I thought that's I said. right. But, I mean, it's not like you got to do it this minute. Okay. But you're agreeable to sending the letter? Yes. Requesting that from the Comptroller General? Yes. All right. I'll withdraw the amendment based on that. Based the on gentleman that. withdraws the amendment, and we'll work together on a letter to the Comptroller. The, the next amendment? No amendment? We'll, okay. we'll now move to H.R. 5343, the FEMA Caseworker Accountability Act. Without objection, the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings, and Emergency Management is discharged from further consideration of H.R. 5343, and I call the bill up for consideration. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with, and the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for a statement on H.R. 5343. Introduced by Representative Rice of South Carolina, H.R. 5343 addresses the high rate of turnover for disaster case management personnel at FEMA. Case management personnel are critical to the disaster recovery process. They help survivors access basic needs such as housing, childcare, and transportation assistance. Losing your home in a natural disaster is a traumatic event. It's imperative that FEMA's case management personnel are experienced and can effectively guide survivors through the difficult recovery process. This legislation requires FEMA to provide a report to Congress with data on case management personnel turnover and any agency plans to address this issue. I strongly support finding solutions and ensure FEMA retains experienced case managers. We must do everything in our power to do right by the survivors of natural disasters. So I support this legislation and would ask my colleagues to do the same. Uh, I now recognize Mr. Webster, the ranking, uh, ranking member of the subcommittee, for a statement. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. This, uh, I support 5343, the FEMA Co Coworker Accountability Act, introduced by my colleague from South Carolina, Mr. Rice and Ms. Mace. It requires the Federal Emergency Management Agency to examine their case management, turnover rates, and the average length of employment for employees and detail to disaster response cases. The goal, I think, is just to reduce the turnover rates. And whatever we can do to do that, I think we ought to do it. So I, I uh, support the bill and yield back. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Is anyone else asked to be recognized on this bill? Are there any amendments to the bill? If not, oh, Mr. Perry, recognized. This is Amendment 377. The clerk will 
Amendment to HR 5343, offered Mr. Perry, Perry, number 377. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. According to the bill sponsors and stakeholders, one of the motivating factors behind this bill was the frustrating experiences, including delays and a lack of co coordination resulting from high turnover and lack of institutional knowledge among FEMA staff, especially, obviously, at disaster locations. I'm sure many of us and our constituents can empathize with the aggravation caused by such red tape, especially during a stressful time like disaster relief and recovery operations. I mean, the last thing you want to have happen is the caseworker that you're, that you're working with in the middle of it then up and leaves and you gotta start all over again. However, I'm concerned that allowing FEMA to write the report on staff turnover would be like letting the fox guard the hen house. You keep that on there, you think we're going to have another Because it's exactly like letting the fox yeah. guard the you hen house. Excuse me, somebody's years. not muted. Excuse us, Mr. Perry. Yeah. Randy Weber, mute oh. your mic. Sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair. All right, the recommendations and steps that they present to improve staff turnover may overlook blind spots in internal management or serve agency goals over the purported goal of the legislation. And I agree with the purported goal of the legislation. I just think that handing the, the, the job to FEMA to, you know, to oversee themselves is, you know, is, is fraught with the obvious conflicts that are gonna come with it. This amendment simply shifts the responsibility for the report from FEMA to the Government Accountability Office, who can obtain the same information required and have a much more objective and unbiased perspective. So it seems to me this is easy peasy. The GAO is the one that should be doing this. They're set up to do it. And the report at the end would have some sense of credibility and validity and, and not just to pick on FEMA, but let's face it, when you gotta take an objective look at yourself, you're gonna have a bias uh, that's gonna be hard to deny. And if there are any problems with the report, it will be immediately discounted. So for the purposes of making sure that the sponsors of the bill get what they're looking for, which I do support, I think that uh, having the GAO doing, do it as opposed to the agency looking at itself provides a much better product or at least, at least pretends to provide a much better product. And with that, I yield the balance of the time, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I rise in support of your amendment, the one offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. Very simply, the amendment calls for the Controller General to conduct the required report on staff turnover at FEMA rather than the administrator of the agency itself. The GAO has produced very thorough assessments of FEMA programs in response to past committee requests, and I look forward to the findings of this report. I support the amendment and urge my colleagues to support it as well. Does any other member wish to speak on the amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute themselves. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. The question is now on the adoption and favorable reporting of HR 5343 to the House of Representatives. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify. Aye. Thank you. All those opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. No, we didn't ask them to unmute that time. The next item for consideration is HR 5547. CARE is an Economic Development Strategy, or the said CEDS Act. Without objection, the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings, and Emergency Management 
is a discharge from further consideration of H.R. 5547, and I call the bill up for consideration. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with, and the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any points. I now recognize myself for a statement on H.R. 5547. H.R. 5547, introduced by Representative Williams of Georgia and Young of Alaska, amends the Public Works and Economic Development Act to require the consideration of access to care-based services in the development of Comprehensive Economic Development Strategies, or CEDS. Access to affordable care-based services is an essential part of regional economic development that has long been overlooked in federal economic development planning. This legislation changes that by ensuring that local economic development districts consider the availability and accessibility of affordable quality care services in creating their agencies. Job creation is an essential aspect of economic development, but doing so without considering access to care services creates a blind spot. For many communities, access to affordable child care remains one of the largest barriers to job recruitment. A report from the Center of American Progress found that more than half of American households live in a child care desert. This is an especially big problem in smaller and rural communities where three out of five households are without adequate access to child care. The scarcity of quality care services has been worsened by the pandemic and increasing costs are being enforced or forced on families. The average cost of infant care in Nevada, for example, is over $11,000 a year. That's more than tuition at a public university. That's not just a problem, that's a crisis. A lack of access to child care, ser or care services for the elderly and for individuals with disability also creates similar hardships for those looking to find work. If people can't afford good quality child care for their families, their ability to accept a good paying job is seriously limited. The SEDS Act provides us a path forward by incorporating access to care services into economic development plans. It allows communities to identify their needs and strategies and integrates an array of care economy considerations into broader economic development plans. I urge a yes vote on this important legislation and I now recognize Ranking Member Webster of the subcommittee for his comments. Thank you, Chair Titus. Uh, given the effect of child care, childhood education, and disability and elder care uh, can have on economic development efforts, it's appropriate to take steps to ensure these factors are considered in communities' economic development strategies. So because of that, I, I urge my colleagues to support this bill and yield my time back. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Does any other member wish to be recognized for statements? <coughs> Ms. Williams is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I urge my colleagues <coughs> to support My Care is an Economic Development Strategy Act. My colleague Don Young and I put this legislation together with a simple idea in mind. Investing in care will help get people back to work, create good paying jobs, and create a stronger economy for everyone. According to a recent poll from the Georgia Early Education Alliance for Ready Students, 34% of Georgia parents with young children said they or someone in their family had to quit a job, decline a job, or change their job in the past 12 months due to problems with finding adequate child care. Parents and caregivers can't go to work and build better lives for their families unless they know that their loved ones are safe and cared for. This is especially true for women who have been forced to drop out of the labor market at record rates during the COVID pandemic, with women of color being disproportionately impacted. Child care, early childhood education, disability and long-term care, and elder care are essential to communities' economic development. When children, seniors, and individuals with disabilities can get the affordable, quality care they need, their family members can return to work, provide for their families, and invigorate our economy. When planning for regional economic development, we need to be sure that access to care-based services is a bigger part of the conversation. Currently, economic development districts must consider transportation access, workforce development, 
technology use, and environmental protection when creating their comprehensive economic development strategies. Right now, there is no mention of considering quality, affordable, care-based services. This bill would add this critical element into consideration. Care is an economic development strategy, and it's time that we treated it like one. My common sense legislation will ensure care accessibility is prioritized for all communities and constituents. I urge all members, as a working mom myself, to support this legislation, and I thank you again, Representative Young, for your partnership. Madam Chair, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Williams. As a chair of the subcommittee that heard this, I agree with what you said. I think it's a great bill. Anybody else wish to speak on this legislation? Are there any amendments to H.R. 5547? We have Perry, amendment number 373. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5547 offered by Mr. Perry, number 373. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read, and I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before we add more conditions onto applicants for economic development administration funds, unfortunately, in this case, conditions completely unrelated, unrelated to the agency's mission, our committee must conduct its oversight duty. This amendment would pause the effective date of this act until the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Economic Development affirms to the relevant congressional committees that these recommendations have been resolved. A GAO report released on July 30th of this year examined federal economic development programs administered by the EDA, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This report identified several issues with fragmentation between these programs, including outdated interagency agreements and no, no formal method to monitor progress towards those agreements. GAO reports that these agreements between agencies are critical to minimize fragmentation and duplication, otherwise known as waste. To put it in simpler terms, if we're going to pay for these agencies, we shouldn't be paying for duplicate work. Man, the taxpayers are so sick of that. We should make sure these issues are resolved promptly before we make substantive changes to the program. So this should be easy. We're just asking for a little bit of oversight before we make decisions here without the information that we should have to make the decision. With that, I urge adoption of the amendment and I yield the balance. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment, which would prevent the implementation of this act until EDA adopts the recommendations made in a July 2021 Government Accountability Office report on opportunities for collaboration among EDA, HUD, and USDA. This amendment seeks to hold up the improvements the bill makes to the development of comprehensive economic development strategies until EDA affirms that the agency has adopted GAO's recommendations on updating interagency agreements with HUD and USDA on community and economic development planning. I'm not opposed to the recommendations made in GAO's report, but waiting on implementation of those recommendations should not be a reason to prevent the positive changes this bill makes to federal economic planning. Regional economic development planners need to start thinking about the availability of affordable care services as soon as possible. If we want to get people back to work faster, they need peace of mind that their family members will be taken care of. The failure to consider care services and federal economic development planning has gone on for long enough, and this amendment would continue that trend. For that reason, I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on the amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say aye. no. 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 The no's have it and the amendment is not agreed Madam to. Madam Chair, I request a recorded vote. A recorded vote was requested and will be postponed till a later time. Are there other amendments to the bill? We now have Mr. Perry, number 374. The clerk will designate the amendment. 
Amendment to H.R. 5547, offered by Mr. Perry, number 374. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read, and I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. To paraphrase a 1989 cult classic, if you build it, they will come. And they did. 20,000 visitors from across the country convened in Dyersville, Iowa, a town of less than 4,500 people to cheer on the Yankees versus the White Sox in the inaugural Field of Dreams game. On top of that, almost six million viewers turned in on TV and streaming platforms and set a record for the most viewed regular season MLB game on Fox since 2005. The game played all the nostalgic notes with Kevin Costner leading players through rows of genuine Iowa corn to the cheers of thousands of fans. Those fans paid a pretty penny to attend such a vaunted game with tickets running an average of $1,400. According to StubHub, $1,400 a ticket. Major League Baseball, recognizing the financial success of the inaugural game, has said it will make the game an annual occasion. However, as much as this field may, have, may be heaven in the speculation of John and Ray Kinsella, I'm not sure we can justify spending taxpayer dollars on a project that doesn't directly create jobs. In September of this year, the Economic Development Administration touted $1.5 million in EDA grant awarded to the city of Dyersville to run city water and wastewater services to the site. There's no doubt that the investment in infrastructure of that sort would help the commercial development. Indeed, in the same post, the Dyersville City Administrator bragged that potential plans include a hotel, a stadium, and a convention center. I'm not sure that's going to be a field of dreams anymore. But anyhow, that begs the question, if such ambitious projects are under consideration or in progress, why in the world does the federal government need to subsidize this non-job-creating provincial infrastructure project under a grant program designed to create opportunities for jobs and industrial plants? Surely, if there are so many promising ventures planned for the area, the city should have no problem in obtaining adequate funding. My amendment, Mr. Chair, or Madam Chair, would simply amend the criteria for public works and e economic development grants to require that projects will direct, directly deliver those criteria. I mean, for goodness sake, at $1,400 a ticket, you think that the Major League Baseball, who, who, by the way, has tax abatement at the federal level, would be willing to do something. I mean, that's such a great investment. Why are taxpayers on the hook for this? I mean, this is... This is just gimmickry over promises, and it underdelivers on the taxpayer's dime. It's to me, you know. Look, it's not that anybody here is not a baseball fan, and it's not that anybody here has a problem with Dyersville, Iowa, or the people that go to the game or any of that stuff. The question is, should the taxpayers be paying for this? Should the federal taxpayers be paying for this? That's the fundamental question, and I submit that there is no there. You really can't justify the payment of things like that. I urge adoption of this amendment, and I yield the balance. Thank you, Ms. Perry. I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment, which would strike the word directly from Section 201B1 of the Public Works and Economic Development Act of 1965, or WIDA. Section 201B1 of WIDA states that the Secretary of Commerce may provide a public works grant only to projects that will directly or indirectly improve the opportunities for the establishment or expansion of industrial or commercial facilities, assist in the creation of long-term employment opportunities, or primarily benefit the long-term unemployed and members of low-income families in the area served by the grant. Removing the word indirectly would hinder the Secretary's ability to consider grants under this section by reducing the number of eligible grant applications. For example, EDA recently funded labs in Maine and Virginia that support the seafood industries in those states. By doing so, they have provided services that the industry relies on and the industry creates jobs. Incubator projects create these uh, indirectly create these jobs, but some of the incubators EDA has funded have graduated very successful companies that now employ a lot of people. EDA has also funded several downtown revitalization projects in Pennsylvania that arguably would have been much less competitive 
if a direct impact had to be demonstrated. I don't see how a project that indirectly improves employment opportunities for a distressed community is any less valuable than one that does so directly. So I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment. Are there other members who wish to be recognized to speak on the amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute themselves. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 The noes have it. The amendment is not agreed. Madam Chair, I request a recorded vote. A recorded vote was requested and will be postponed until a later time. Are there any further amendments to H.R. 5547? Mr. Perry has amendment 375. The clerk will uh, designate the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5547, authorized by Mr. Perry, number 375. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I now recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Lately, some of my colleagues have gone, or appear to have gone numb to sums amounting to billions or tens of billions. After all, many on the left are disappointed that as of yet unwritten bill to indebt our future Americans may land closer to two trillion than 10 trillion. However, to folks in the district that I represent in Pennsylvania, and I think to many districts across the country, um, $1 billion is still a tidy sum of money. And when the federal government is spending any money, Congress has a duty to ensure it was spent properly. The Economic Development Administration's Economic Adjustment Assistance, or EAA program, was tasked with administering $1.5 billion in tax taxpayer dollars to prevent prepare for and respond to coronavirus domestically or internationally, including for necessary expenses for responding to economic injury as a result of coronavirus. That's quite a lofty goal, especially for an agency which has only managed 292 million in FY 2020, so that's last year. This amendment, my amendment, directs the Department of Commerce Inspector General to submit a report to Congress on the activities and outcomes of that 1.5 billion including information on each recipient and the corresponding project. Seems like it should be an easy lift to just have the uh, Commerce Inspector General to submit a report on $1.5 billion. It's still real money where I come from, and I think it's real money where a lot of people come from, and all we're asking for is an accounting of it so we can do our job. Yes. We don't yes. want these small sums to fly under the radar. This, in, this amendment ensures we get to the bottom of where this money was spent. I urge adoption of the amendment, and I yield the balance, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I support this amendment, which would require the Inspector General of the Department of Commerce to submit a report to Congress on the activities and outcomes of economic, economic adjustment assistance funding provided to ETA by the CARES Act. This report would include information detailing each recipient and corresponding project that received economic adjustment assistance funding through CARES, as is the responsibility of this committee to oversee the administration of these funds. I can't see an issue with directing the Commerce Inspector General to compile the information necessary to inform our oversight. I support this amendment and I ask my colleagues to do the same. Does any other member wish to be recognized to speak on the amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it, the amendment is agreed to. The question is now, Oh, we've got another one. Okay, I beg your pardon. We have another amendment. It's number 376. Mr. Perry, the clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5547, offered by Mr. Perry, number 376. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. 
I recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Congress and the American people have been on a roller coaster for the past few months as the Biden administration struggles to enact any part of its yeah. agenda and reverse many successful Trump administration policies, resulting in the border crisis, ballooning inflation, and the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Central to that goal is the reconciliation bill, which far-left Democrats need in order to realize their socialist vision for America. Though it was pitched as an infrastructure bill, Democrats seem to, dis to subscribe to an expanded definition of infrastructure. Proposed provisions for this reconciliation bill include a Green New Deal climate army, taxpayer subsidies for rich people to buy electric cars, and accelerated Medicare insolvency. According to one Democrat colleague in the other chamber, even paid leave, child care, and caregiving are now considered infrastructure. This bill completely leans into this insanity with care-based services added to the list of priorities in the comprehensive economic development strategy that economic development applicants must submit to the Secretary of Commerce. Put another way, this program, which is meant to promote economic development, even if that means meddling in private industry, is now also focused on directly or indirectly increasing the accessibility of care services, including child care, early childhood education, and long-term care, all important subjects to be sure but not appropriate or germane to this bill and this committee. As it is, the agency performs roles that are duplicative or similar to other programs in the federal government, and Democrats are going to continue to add irrelevant, unnecessary priorities to its mission, which of course will lead to additional funding for those priorities. I don't see why we should continue to fund it. This amendment would abolish the EDA and save the taxpayer hundreds of millions of dollars per year and I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. I yield the balance. I could not disagree more with the sponsor of this amendment. I am in strong opposition to this amendment, which would abolish the Economic Development Administration one year after enactment of the legislation. It attempts to do what the Trump administration started by permanently ending operation of the EDA. EDA is the only federal government agency focused exclusively on economic development. Now, some of our colleagues may not think that's important or think it's a role that the government should play, but let me just remind you of a few of the things the EDA does. EDA supports American manufacturing. In the past five years alone, the agency has invested more than $930 million in projects that support domestic manufacturing efforts. EDA also provides economic recovery from disasters. From 2017 to 2019, EDA administered over $1 billion in assistance to communities affected by natural disasters. EDA fosters innovation and entrepreneurship. The Build to Scale program has awarded over $100 million in grants, which has leveraged more than $1.6 billion and follow on investment capital into startups and new venture funds that have helped create over 14,000 jobs. Every dollar EDA spends on infrastructure generates roughly $15 in private investment. In fact, just two months ago, EDA awarded a $3.8 million grant to the Susquehanna Area Regional Airport Authority in Representative Perry's district. That project is expected to create 354 jobs, retain 458 jobs, and generate $8.4 million in private investment. Mr. Perry may not think so, but that sounds like value added to me. Don't just take my word for it. Here's a quote from Mr. Perry about the project. After a tremendous amount of planning, coordination, and teamwork, with the great folks from the Susquehanna Area Regional Airport Authority and the EDA, I am thrilled, no less thrilled, to help carry this grant across the finish line and bring more jobs and private investment to our amazing community. This is a wonderful example of how public and private entities can work together in a nonpartisan fashion for the greater good of those they serve." End quotes. The message is clear. EDA provides the American taxpayer with a significant return on investment, and I would encourage my colleagues to reject this ridiculous proposal and vote no on the amendment.
Does anyone else like to be recognized to speak on the amendment? Mr. Madam Young? Chair. Mr. Young, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, um, you know, I, I've been listening to this debate and discussion. I'm the author of this bill with Ms. Williams. Uh, EDA in Alaska has been a huge success. And um, I look forward to the turn of the, uh, the inspector general because you'll find out the money invested has created not only uh, a great revenue source for local people, but building my state. And like you said, it's the only agency that really invested in maybe in creating something instead of just spending something. So maybe the intent is well taken, but I say it's the wrong thing to do. I'm encouraging my members to vote no on this amendment. I do support the last amendment as you did. I do think with Inspector General, you'll find out maybe we're really doing a better job than we think we are, but this agency does work. So I urge a no on the amendment and I do respect people that offer these amendments, but when I know it works, I stay with it. God bless and you back. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. Do any other members wish to be recognized to speak on this amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I would ask all those who are participating remotely to unmute. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. 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 The no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. We now have one more amendment to H.R. 5547. That's Perry number 386. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5547 offered Mr. Perry number 386. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. I recognize Mr. Perry to speak on his amendment for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. This amendment would require the GAO to complete a report on the Economic Development Administration, including the number of jobs created by each EDA program since the inception of each program, and analysis of economic growth in jurisdictions that have received funding from the EDA. The EDA's proponents shout from the rooftops that the program helps create jobs and generate private investment. In EDA's fiscal year 2019 report, they claim that $645.8 million in grants will help create and retain roughly 27,000 jobs and $4.6 billion in private investment. Those numbers certainly sound impressive, but self-reported PR-friendly metrics only do so much to help Congress perform oversight. After all, grantees may exaggerate job creation and retention numbers to obtain funding. Private invest investment may fall through or businesses may shudder. I know that analyzing every EDA program from inception will be a painstaking process, which is why the GAO has two years to complete the report. However, despite the complexity, this is a worthwhile pursuit. Having this report analyze, analyzing actual job creation and economic growth will give this committee a comprehensive resource from an objective perspective to show what taxpayers have been bankrolling since 1965. And I urge support of the amendment and I yield the balance. Thank you, Mr. Perry. I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment, which would direct the GAO every, every Economic Development Administration program. The SEDS Act is not the appropriate vehicle to require a GAO report analyzing the performance of every single EDA program since its creation. I'm by no means opposed to examining the efficacy of government agencies. I support that. But if the gentleman is generally interested in commissioning a report as comprehensive as what this amendment would require, he should introduce legislation that does so on its own, not be part of this SEDS Act. The submission of this amendment appears to be another attempt to weaken or discredit an agency that has provided billions of dollars in assistance to economically distressed communities. I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment. Does anyone else wish to be recognized to speak on the amendment? Are there amendments to the amendment? If not, the question is on the amendment. I ask those participating remotely to unmute yourselves. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. 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 The no's have it. The amendment is not. Madam Chair, I request a recorded vote. A recorded vote was requested and will be postponed until a later time. <laughs> 
Our next item for consideration is 4771 to designate the federal building and United States Courthouse located at 111 North Adams Street in Tallahassee, Florida as the Joseph Woodrow Hatchet United States Courthouse and Federal Building. Without objection, the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings and Emergency Management is discharged from further consideration of H.R. 4771 and I call the bill up for consideration. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with and the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for a statement on H.R. 4771. H.R. 4771 designates the federal building at 111 North Adams Street in Tallahassee, Florida as the Joseph Woodrow Hatchet United States Courthouse and Federal Building. H.R. 4771 is sponsored by Representative Al Lawson of Florida and co-sponsored by the entire bipartisan Florida congressional delegation, including three members of this committee. Born during the days of segregation, Judge Hatchett grew up in Clearwater, Florida. He graduated from Florida A&M in 1954 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. He entered Howard University of Law, uh, School of Law in 1956, and when he took the Florida bar exam in 1959, Jim Crow regulations prevented him from staying in the hotel where the test was administered. After admission to the Florida Bar, Judge Hatchett entered private practice in Daytona Beach, practicing criminal, civil, administrative, and civil rights law in state and federal courts. A series of judicial appointments that began in 1971 ultimately led to his placement on the United States Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals by President Jimmy Carter in 1979 making Judge Hatchett the first black man appointed to a federal appeals court in the Deep South. Judge Hatchett retired from the bench in 1999 and passed away in April last year, 2021, at the age of 88. I support H.R. 4771, and I urge my colleagues to join me. I now recognize Ranking Member Webster for a statement. Thank you, Chair Titus. Uh, I knew Judge Hatchett. He was a fine man. He served also first. He was the first African-American to serve on the state Supreme Court in the, in the late 70s. He uh, did a fantastic job there. Then he was appointed to the, to the federal court. And uh, he was a phenomenal courtroom uh, Judge, he handled his courtroom in such man. a mighty way. He was a great man, and uh, I think this is, is due him. I'm so glad that it's him. I'm glad Al, uh, Al Lawson is uh, sponsoring this. He and I worked together on a lot of things, and including the things we did with Judge Hatchett. So he's well-deserving. He did a great job not only in the state courts, but also in the federal court. And uh, I am for this bill, and I recommend it to my colleagues. Yield back my time. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Do any other members wish to be recognized to speak on this? Are there any amendments to HR forty-seven seventy-one? Congresswoman Wilson, which is oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson, I didn't hear you, Ms. Wilson. You'll be recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Chairman. As a, a Floridian, I stand in full support of HR 4771 to designate a federal building and courthouse in honor of Judge Joseph Woodrow Hatchett, who I knew very well. Judge Hatchett was a historic figure who dedicated his career to civil service, civil rights, and justice. And I'm proud that Mr. Lawson has offered this naming. Uh, as a proud HBCU alumnus of the Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University and Howard University, Judge Hatchett's commitment to justice set him on a trailblazing path that laid a foundation for the black legal minds that followed him. He was the first black justice to serve on the Florida Supreme Court and was the first black man appointed to a federal appeals court 
in the Deep South by then President Jimmy Carter. His greatness did not go unnoticed. The National Bar Association inducted Judge Hatchett into its Hall of Fame in 2005. The American Bar Association Commission on Racial and Ethnic Diversity in the Profession honored him with its Spirit of Excellence Award for his contributions to the promotion of racial and ethnic diversity within the legal profession. Judge Hatchett was an outstanding public servant, legal professional, and inspiration for all Floridians and citizens across this nation. I'm proud as a co-sponsor of this important legislation to honor the late Joseph Hatchett, and I urge my colleagues to support this bill. With that, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Sounds like Judge Hatchett's the just the kind of person we should name a federal building for. Anybody <laughs> else wish to speak on the amendment, on the uh, measure? Are there any amendments to HR 4771? The question then is on the adoption and favorable reporting of HR 4771 to the House of Representatives. All those in favor signify, oh, let's unmute if you're doing this remotely. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it, the bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Our next item for consideration is H.R. 246 to designate the federal building and United States Courthouse located at 180 West Main Street in Abingdon, Virginia as the H. Emory Widener Jr. Federal Building and United States Courthouse. Without objection, the Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings, and Emergency Management is discharged from further consideration of H.R. 246 and I call the bill up for consideration. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with and the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. I now recognize myself for a statement on H.R. 246. H.R. 246 designates the federal building at 180 West Main Street in Abingdon, Virginia as the H. Emory Widener Jr. Federal Building and United States Courthouse. The bill is sponsored by Representative Griffith H. Morgan of Virginia's 9th District. Hiram Emery Widner, Jr. was a lieutenant in the United States Naval Reserve in the 1950s. He was nominated to the United States District Court for the Western District of Virginia in 1969 and served as a judge for two years. He was then elevated to the Fourth Circuit. Bristol attorney Lynn Darty said Judge Widener exemplified the best the public can expect from a judge. Charles H. Smith, Jr., a retired judge and former colleague, remembers Judge Widener as a lawyer's lawyer and an astute student of the law. I support H.R. 246, and I urge my colleagues to join me. I now recognize Ranking Member Webster for a statement. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Titus. I, I did not know this man, and, but I'm, it sounds like from uh, all the things I've read, he's well worthy of a vote. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Bless, I agree. Do any other members wish to be recognized for statements? Are there any amendments to H.R. 246? The question then is on the adoption and favorable reporting for H.R. 246 to the House of Representatives. If you are viewing this remotely, please unmute yourselves. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. We'll now consider 12 General Services Administration Capital Investment and Leasing Program resolutions. I ask unanimous consent to call up the resolutions on block and that they be considered as read and open to amendment as any point. Without objection, so ordered. I support the 12 GSA resolutions before us today. 11 of these resolutions provide GSA with the authorization needed to update life safety, fire protection, 
seismic, structural, mechanical, electrical, water, and roof systems in GSA-owned and leased buildings around the country. These projects are necessary to upgrade systems that have been in place since the buildings were originally constructed. Most of the buildings in GSA's owned portfolio are 50 years old or more, making the structural and life safety systems obsolete and dangerous. A particular interest is a resolution which authorizes the second phase of a two-phase repair and alteration project for the GSA's regional office building in Washington, D.C. The project will renovate and modernize the building to permanently house several Department of Homeland Security components, which are currently in leased space. In addition to the repair and alteration resolutions, the committee is also authorizing the design of the first phase of a multi-phase project to construct a new U.S. courthouse annex in San Juan, Puerto Rico, home of our TNI colleague, Congresswoman Gonzalez Colon. I support these resolutions and urge my colleagues to do the same. I now recognize Ranking Member Webster for a statement. Thank you, Chair Titus. Uh, today, we're considering these resolutions for construction, repairs, and, and alterations designed to save taxpayer money and boost efficient use of the capital. These projects reflect critical work to address security, life safety issues, and to avoid cost ex, uh, escalations. I want to thank uh, the sub-chair, Titus, for working with us on moving these forward, and I urge my colleagues to support these resolutions. Yield back my time. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Are there any other members who wish to be recognized on these projects? Are there any amendments to the on block resolutions? The question is now on the adoption of the 12 GSA resolutions on block. All those in favor signify by saying aye after you unmute yourself. Aye. 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 All those aye. opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it and the 12 resolutions are adopted. We'll now proceed to consideration of the amendments on which the recorded votes were requested and postponed. Members are reminded to have their cameras on <coughs> and to clearly state your name when called upon by the clerk to record your vote. <coughs> First, the question is on agreeing to the amendment offered by Mr. Perry, number 381, on which the no prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give us a break, Mr. Webster. <laughs> the, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. Um, sorry, which vote is this? Perry. This is, this is yeah, amendment number two are, to HR 56. No, 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 no. <laughs> You only get one vote, Mr. Chairman. Mr. DeFazio <laughs> votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Aye. I need some other. Mr. Graves of Missouri I'm, votes no. Ms. Norton. You can't understand it. Ms. Norton votes no. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas vote time. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Let me just remind everybody that we're voting on uh, the amendment to HR 1066 that was offered by Mr. Perry. Is everybody clear on that? 1066 offered by Mr. Perry. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead with the roll call. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford. Crawford <clears throat> votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson, no. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. 
Ms. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Ms. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Vautier. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Yeah. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Perry. So we've done. Mr. Garamendi. We do this Mr. one. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis this of Illinois. One we got one more. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Um, but anyway, I think I should probably get on the phone with uh... somebody's unmuted. We want to watch that hot mic. Mr. Katko. Mr. Katko votes no. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes yay. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Babin. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Mr. Maloney of New York. No. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. Uh, aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Mr. Payne. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Lowenthal. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be no, right? Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. DeSaunier, no. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Lynch. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. No. Mr. Malinowski votes no. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Stanton. Stan votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Guest. Yes, votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. Mr. Nails. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Ms. Mace. Mace votes aye. Ms. Mace votes aye. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. No. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Mr. Moulton. Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes no. Mr. Jimenez votes no. Ms. Bardo. Mrs. Steele. Port Bordeaux votes no. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Bar Ms. Bardo votes no. Mr. Cahale. Cahale votes no. Mr. Cahale votes no. Mr. Strickland. Strickland votes no. 
Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Gibbs. Mr. Massey. Oh, Gibbs votes yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Sirez. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, this is Hank Johnson. How am I recorded? The gentleman is not recorded. I vote no. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, Georgia votes no. Mr. Sirius. Yeah, uh, Madam Chairman. Mr. Perry. Johnson, Johnson, we'll, that. we'll finish. Mr. Perry votes aye. Let the clerk finish the roll and then we'll come back and see who might have been missed or want to change their vote. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We Mr. Bell. Madam Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We're here. Madam Chairman, uh, LaMalfa from California here. Uh huh. Mr. Malfa, LaMalfa, what is it? Oh, I, I, I didn't cast my vote yet. Okay. We're going to go through the vote as we intended, and then the clerk's going to come back and call the name of everybody who was missed because there are a number of people. So let's Thank let the clerk okay. do what his job is, and then we'll come back. Mr. Babin. Babin's aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Mr. Bost. Mr. LaMalfa. Mr. Bost votes uh, LaMalfa, LaMalfa, no. Mr. LaMalfa votes no. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Delgado. Mr. Pappas. Delgado votes no. Delgado votes no. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Do any other members wish to be recorded? Any members was, wish to change their vote? Is Massey recorded? Is Mr. Massey recorded? Mr. Massey is not recorded. You're not recorded. Massey, Massey votes yes. Mr. Massey votes aye. Any other members? Uh, what's John, this is how am I recorded? Uh, has Ms. Johnson recorded? Ms. Johnson of Texas recorded as I. Recorded as I. I want to change that to no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. And please change Carson to a no as well. Thank you. Mr. Carson votes no. Any other members wish to change or be recorded? Westerman votes no. Mr. Westerman votes no. Anybody else? All right, the clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there are 18 yeas and 45 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment offered by Mr. Perry, number 379, on which the noes prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. No. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. Congresswoman Norton votes no. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, no. Mr. Crawford votes no. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson, no. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Mrs. Napolitano. 
No. Mr. Napolitano votes Napolitano, no. Napolitano, no. Mr. Webster. I have privilege that maybe I don't actually have. Uh, Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen of the Volunteer State, the home of Tim Burchett, votes no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Massey votes aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cirez. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Katko. Mr. Katko votes Johnson of Georgia. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Katko. Mr. Katko votes no. Mr. Katko votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin votes aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. Mr. Maloney of New York. No. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. No. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Mr. LaMalfa. Are you muted? LaMalfa, no. Mr. LaMalfa votes no. Mr. Payne. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Lynch. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes no. Mr. Balderson votes no. Mr. Malinowski. No. Mr. Malinowski votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. From the great state of Tennessee, home of Steve Cropper, Al, the Reverend Al Green, and Steve Cohen, Tim Burchett votes aye. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Guest. Yes, votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. Delgado votes no. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mace, yes. Ms. Mace votes aye. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. Yes. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. A Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes yes. Mr. Jimenez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Cahale. Cahale votes no. Mr. Cahale votes no. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. 
Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Gibbs. Uh, Gibbs votes yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Madam Chair, Crawford. Ms. Crawford. Wish to change my vote. Wish to change my vote. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Any other members wish to be recorded or change the vote? The clerk will, will uh, report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there were 22 yeas and 43 noes. The nays have it and the amendment is not agreed to. The question is on the amendment and the nature of a substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it and the amendment and the nature of a substitute is agreed to. The question is now on the adoption and favorable reporting of H.R. 1066 as amended to the House of Representatives. All those in favor, unmute yourselves and signify by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed signify by saying nay. No. Nay. No. 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 No nay. The ayes have it. The bill is amended as approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Madam Chair, I request a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested. The clerk will call the roll. Aye. Yep. Mr. DeFazio. Aye. Mr. DeFazio votes aye. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes aye. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton. Uh, Councilman Norton of the district votes aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson, yes. Mr. Larson of Washington votes aye. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, yes. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Ah. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Massey. No. Mr. Oh, Massey votes no. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes no. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Mr. Ronnie Davis of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Carson. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes aye. Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes yes. Mr. Maloney of New York votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Bost. Aye. Mr. Bost votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Uh, Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. 
Payne votes aye. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Westerman? Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Mast? Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier? DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. Gallagher? Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch? Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Carbajal? Ms. Gonzalez Colon? Mr. Brown? Brown votes aye. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Balderson? Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski? No. Mr. Malinowski votes no. Mr. Stauber? Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton? Stanton votes aye. Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Burchett? Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred? Aye. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota? Johnson votes aye. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas? Davids votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Guest. Yes votes no. Mr. Guest votes no. Mr. Delgado. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Nails. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes yes. Mr. Lamb votes aye. Ms. Maliotakis. Yep, that makes sense. Aye. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Moulton aye. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes aye. The gentleman repeat. Jimenez votes aye. Mr. Jimenez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes aye. Ms. Bardot votes aye. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. The gentleman repeat. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele? Haley votes aye. Yeah. Mr. Haley votes aye. Ms. Strickland. Yeah. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Newman. Newman votes aye. Ms. Newman votes aye. Mr. Carter. Somebody. I reported. Can somebody check to see if they're unmuted? We're hearing some strange noises here, and the clerk can't hear the vote. Thank you. Mr. Young. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Johnson Graves. of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, yes. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Ms. Mace. Why don't we just do electronic? Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Carter. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Does anyone need to be recorded or change their vote? Madam Chair, may I change my vote? Auchincloss. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Auchincloss votes aye. Mr. Auchincloss recorded as aye. Mr. Carson is aye. 
Mr. Carson is aye. Mr. Malinowski is also aye. Madam Chair. Mr. Malinowski is recorded as aye. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to change my vote, please. Aye. They made it. Aye. Wait, just a minute. Wait, just a minute. Yeah. Is this Mr. Carter? Mr. Carter votes aye. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Carter's recorded as aye. Anybody else want to be recorded or change their vote? The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there are 61 yeas and three noes. The ayes have it. The bill is amended and ordered reported favorably to the House. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment to H.R. 5689 offered by Mr. Perry, number 384, on which the noes prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. All right. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. No. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. <coughs> Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Aye. Gibbs, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Yes. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Webster. Aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Massey votes yes. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cirez. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Mr. Katko. Katko votes no. Mr. Katko votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin, yes. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Right, this is the next bill. This is the troublesome yeah. very one. Yeah. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. No. Mr. Bost votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, no. Mr. LaMalfa votes no. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. <clears throat> Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. No. Mr. Gallagher votes no. Mr. Lynch. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitzpatrick votes no. Ms. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Ms. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes no. Mr. Balderson votes no. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes no. Mr. Allred. No. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Johnson votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes no. Mr. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes no. 
Ms. Davis of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia is a no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Guest. Yes, votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. Mr. Nails. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. Aye. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes no. Mr. Jimenez votes no. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes no. Mrs. Steele votes no. Mr. Kahele. Kahele votes no. Mr. Kahele votes no. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Graves of Louisiana. Mr. Westerman. No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitz uh, Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Delgado. Mr. No. Mr. Delgado, Delgado votes no. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Nails votes yes. Mr. Nails votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Moulton. Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Madam Chair, how am I recorded? Napolitano? Has Ms. Napolitano recorded? No, yeah. Please change to a no. Ms. Napolitano. Ma Madam yes, yes, Ms. Napolitano, we hear you and we are changing you to a no. Is that correct? Thank yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, Nicole Maliotakis. I'd also like to change my vote to a no, please. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Okay. Thank you. This is Salud Carvajal. How am I recorded? Has Mr. Carvajal recorded? Mr. Carvajal's recorded as no. Thank you. The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there were 10 yeas and 51 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment to HR 5689 offered by Mr. Perry, number 387, in which the noes prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. All right, the clerk will please call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. No. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. No. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Larson of Washington. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. 
Mr. Larson of Washington. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs is a yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Ms. Napolitano. No. Ms. Napolitano. No. Votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes no. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Massey votes yes. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Sirez. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin votes aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. <laughs> Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Payne votes aye. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. Gallagher votes no. Mr. Gallagher votes no. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. No. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Mr. Brown. Mr. Balderson. Balderson is aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Stauber. <laughs> Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia is a no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Guest. Yes votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. No. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. No. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Mr. Moulton. Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes no. Mr. Jimenez votes no. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele. Kahele votes no. Mr. Kahele votes no. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. No. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Larson of Washington. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Sirez. 
Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Malinowski. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. Any other members wish to be recorded or to change their vote? Uh, Madam Chair, this is Graves, Louisiana. How am I recorded? As Mr. Graves recorded. The, Mr. Graves, Louisiana is recorded as I. Graves, Louisiana, no. Ms. Graves, Louisiana votes no. Mr. Malinowski votes no. Mr. Malinowski is recorded as no. Are there any other members who wish to be recorded or change their vote? The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there were 16 yeas and 49 noes. The, the amendment is agreed to. Mm -hmm. No. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, would you, would you please, please say that again, Mr. Clerk? Vote, there were 16 yeas and 49 noes. Oh, I misunderstood the 16 part. Uh, the amendment is not agreed to. The question is now on the adoption and favorable reporting of H.R. 5689 as amended to the House of Representatives. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The bill as amended is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Madam Chair, I request a recorded vote. I re the clerk will call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. No. Yeah. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes aye. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Mr. Larson of Washington votes aye. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Napolitano. Napolitano, aye. Ms. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Webster. Webster votes aye. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Massey. Massey votes no. Mr. Massey votes no. Mr. Sirez. No, this is the actual bill. Okay. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes no. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin, aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes yes. Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes yes. Mr. Maloney of New York votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, yes. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Bost. Mr. Boss votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. I don't know where it is either, so. Mr. Weber of Texas. It's all over the map. There's Democrats are voting yes and no. <laughs> Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes yes. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Weber of Texas. 
Weber, Weber of Texas votes no. I mean, aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Mast. Aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. Aye. Mr. DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Carbajal. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. Aye. Mr. Malinowski votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Allred. Aye. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Guest. Guest votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. Aye. Mr. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Nails. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes yes. Mr. Lamb votes aye. Ms. Maliotakis. Yes. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Moulton aye. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, aye. Mr. Auchincloss votes aye. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes aye. Mr. Jimenez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes aye. Ms. Bardot votes aye. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele. Kahele votes aye. Mr. Kahele votes aye. Mr. Strickland. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Newman. Newman votes aye. Ms. Newman votes aye. Mr. Carter. Carter votes aye. Mr. Carter votes aye. Mr. Young. Mr. Ceres. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Gallagher. Madam Chair. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. Madam Chair. DeFazio. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I believe that I uh, misrecorded my vote because I thought it was yet another one of these deleterious time-wasting amendments. My vote should have been aye. Mr. DeFazio votes aye. Do any other members wish to be recorded or change their vote? Mr. Carson, yes, Madam can you clerk. Just vote to... Uh, the, clerk can't, the clerk can't hear you, so let's try it one at a time. Anybody else want to change or be recorded on this vote? Madam yes, Chair, Mr. this Carson is Hank votes Johnson. Aye. How, how am I recorded? Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Mr. Carson is aye. Mr. Mr. Johnson, Johnson Georgia is recorded as no. No. I want to change my vote to aye. Mr. Johnson, Georgia votes aye. Okay. Adam, Madam Chair, how is Fitzpatrick recorded? How's Mr. Fitzpatrick recorded? Mr. Fitzpatrick is recorded as aye. Thank you. Any other members want to change their vote or be recorded? 
The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on that vote, there were 63 yeas and two noes. The amendment is agreed to. The ayes have it, and the bill as amended is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment to H.R. 5673, offered by Mr. Perry. It's number 378, on which the nays prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. All right, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Scafazio. Definitively no. Ms. Scafazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes no. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson, no. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs, no. Mr. Gibbs votes no. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes no. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Massey votes aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Cirez. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Ronnie Davis of Illinois. Davis, Illinois, no. Mr. David, Ronnie Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Uh, Babin, aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, no. Graves, no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. No. Mr. Rouser votes no. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Mrs. Ms. Wilson of Florida. No. Ms. Wilson. <coughs> Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. Okay. LaMalfa, no. Ms. LaMalfa votes no. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mr. Lowenthal. No. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. No. Mr. Mast votes no. Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. No. Mr. Gallagher votes no. Mr. Lynch. So Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. No. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. This just coming. <laughs> This Balderson is votes no. Mr. Balderson votes no. Ms. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes no. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. No. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas. David's votes no. Ms. Davis of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Delgado. I'm sorry. Mr. No. Mr. Delgado no. votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Guest. Guest votes no. Mr. Guest votes no. Mr. Nails. Mr. Nails votes no. 
Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. No. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Mr. Moulton. Moulton no. Mr. Moulton votes no. <laughs> Ms. Dine. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes no. Mr. Jimenez votes no. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes no. Mrs. Steele votes no. Mr. Kahele. Kahele votes no. Mr. Kahele votes no. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. Mr. Young. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Ceres. Ms. Brownlee. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Malinowski. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. Hey. Madam Chair Crawford, Arkansas. Something was wrong. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. Who is it? Crawford, Arkansas. I wish to change my vote to no. Mr. Crawford oh, no, votes no. Does anybody else wish to be report, recorded or to change their vote? The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on that vote, there were five yeas and 59 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is on the adoption and favorable reporting of H.R. 5673 to the House of Representatives. All those in favor, unmute yourselves and signify by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, aye. signify aye. by saying nay. The ayes have it. The bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Madam Chair, I request to record the vote. A recorded vote has been requested. <laughs> Please report the vote. Come on. Okay, you're beginning to get some hostile reactions. <laughs> he doesn't care, so we'll just continue without the editorial comment. Please call the roll. Mr. Fazio. Uh, no to this deleterious, stupid amendment. Oh, uh, this is not an amendment. We're on final passage of HR 5673. Oh, I thought we we're still dealing with Mr. Perry. Call, oh, we call for another vote on something that everybody's for. Uh, yes. Mr. Fazio votes aye. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes aye. Ms. Norton. Aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Yes. Mr. Larson of Washington votes aye. Mr. Gibbs. Aye. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Ms. Napolitano. Napolitano, aye. Ms. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. But no. Mr. Cohen votes. This on the bill or the amendment? Check where you are. This is on the bill. It's on, on the, the bill. I vote aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Massey. Massey votes no. Mr. Massey votes no. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes no. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Ronnie Davis. Davis Illinois votes aye. Mr. Davis Illinois votes aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Kako votes aye. Mr. Carson. Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin. 
Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Babin. Babin aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes aye. Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, yes. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Mr. Bost. Huffman, Huffman aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Ms. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Mr. Balderson. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. Aye. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Guest. Yes, votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. Mr. Nails. Aye. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Nails. Nails votes aye. The gentleman repeat. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes yes. Mr. Lamb votes aye. Ms. Maliotakis. Yes. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes aye. Mr. Jimenez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes aye. Ms. Bardot votes aye. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele. Kahele votes aye. Mr. Kahele votes aye. Ms. Strickland. <laughs> Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Newman. Newman votes aye. Ms. Newman votes aye. Mr. Carter. Carter votes aye. Mr. Carter votes aye. Mr. Young. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Malinowski. Ms. Mace. Mr. Moulton. Moulton aye. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Ms. Strickland. Aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Does any member wish to change a vote or be recorded? I was Carnival Hall recorded. Mr. Carbajal's recorded as I. Thank you. 
The clerk will please report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there were 60 yeas and two noes. Thank you. The, the ayes have it. The bill is approved and reported favorably to the House. That's H.R. 5673. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment to H.R. 5547, offered by Mr. Perry, number 373, on which the noes prevail. Is the recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. Will the clerk please call the roll? Oh, man. Mr. DeFazio. That would be a no. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes no. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Uh, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Webster. <laughs> Mr. Webster votes no. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Massey. Mr. Ceres. No. This is a no. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Let me see, Mr. Mr. Garamendi I... votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Travel. Davis, Illinois votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Kako uh... votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Hello? Graves, yes. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana uh -oh. votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Hello? Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Hello? Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Mr. Boss votes no. Mr. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of, of, of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa aye. Ms. LaMalfa oh. votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. No. Mr. Gallagher. Votes no. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Ms. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. No. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson, South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davis of Kansas. Davis votes no. Ms. Davis of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Mr. Guest. Guest votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. No. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Nails votes aye. Mr. Nails votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. 
Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis? No. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Mr. Moulton? Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne? Mr. Auchincloss? Mr. Menez? Menez votes no. Mr. Menez votes no. Ms. Bardot? Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele? Mr. Kahele? Steele votes aye. Mrs. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele? Ms. Strickland? Aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia? Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman? Still rolling. Really? Mr. Carter? Carter's no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young? Mr. Massey? Massey, Massey votes yes. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Ceres? Mr. Payne? Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon? Mr. Balderson? Balderson votes no. Mr. Balderson votes no. Mr. Malinowski? Mr. Garcia of Illinois? Garcia's a no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Ms. Mace? Ms. Van Dyne? Mr. Auchincloss? Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Kahele? Ms. Newman? No. Ms. Newman votes no. Does any member wish to change a vote or to be recorded? Clerk will report the vote. Oh, I'm sorry, is Ms. Strickland trying to reach us? No, we're good. Okay, will the clerk please record the vote? Madam Chair, on that vote, there were 17 yeas and 45 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is now on agreeing to the amendment to H.R. 5547 offered by Mr. Perry. It's number 374. The noes prevailed. Is the recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chair. Oh. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. DeFazio. No, yet again. Mr. DeFazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes no. Ms. Norton. No. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Rick Larson of Washington State is voting no. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Or press one for more options. Napolitano, no. Mr. Gibbs. Mrs. Napolitano. Gibbs, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Massey. Massey votes yes. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois. Davis, Illinois votes no. Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Babin aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Mr. 
Mr. Maloney votes now. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney Graves is no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes no. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss votes no. Ms. Brownlee. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. No. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, no. Mr. Mr. LaMalfa votes no. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. 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 Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mass votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes no. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Balderson, aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. Did Stauber. they call in the second round? Mr. Stauber. Stauber, no. Mr. Stauber Aaron? votes no. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Al Mr. Burchett votes no. Mr. Allred. No, no. Mr. Allred yes. votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. No. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes no. Mr. David, Ms. Davis of Kansas. Davis votes no. Ms. Davis of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Garcia still, of Illinois. They haven't gone through the second round. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia. But we are Illinois not on the second no. round yet. So whoever's asking that, the answer is no. We'll be getting to it in just a minute. Will the clerk please continue? Mr. Guest. Yes, votes aye. The gentleman repeat. Uh, guest votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. No. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. No. Ms. Maliotakis votes no. Mr. Moulton. Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Ockenclaus. Mr. Ockenclaus, no. Mr. Ockenclaus votes no. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez votes no. Mr. Jimenez votes no. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Mr. Kahele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Carter votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes no. Mr. Cohen. Uh, no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Ceres. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Malinowski. Mr. Nails. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. 
Mr. Kahele. Does any member wish to change a vote or be recorded? Madam Chair, how is Weber recorded? Uh, has Mr. Weber recorded? Mr. Weber's record is aye. Thank you. Madam Chair, how am I recording Graves? Mr. Has Graves, Mr. Louisiana's record is no. Um, uh, could I please be a yes? Mr. Graves votes aye. Uh, this is Davis, Illinois. How am I recording? Mr. Has Mr. Davis recorded? Mr. Rodney Davis of Illinois' record is no. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burchett, record, um, change to vote aye. Does anybody else wish to change or be recorded? Which, this is Congressman Lowenthal. Which one are we voting on? We're voting on amendment number 374 offered by Mr. Perry to HR, I'm a no. to HR 55. I'm a no. Well, let me answer your question, then you can tell us what your vote is. HR 5547. Thank you. I'm a no. Mr. Lowenthal has recorded as no. The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there are 14 yeas and 47 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question is on agreeing to the amendment offered by Mr. Perry, number 386, in which the noes prevailed. Is a recorded vote still requested? Yes, Madam Chairman. Will the clerk please call the roll? You need to take a break. You okay, clerk? All right, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. DeFazio. No. Mr. Tafazio votes no. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes aye. Ms. Norton. Norton votes no. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Young. <clears throat> Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes no. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes no. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson, no. Mr. Larson of Washington votes no. Mr. Gibbs. Uh, Gibbs, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Mr. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mr. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Massey. Massey votes aye. Mr. Massey votes aye. Mr. Sirez. Ms. McBath votes no. Mr. Stanton. No. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Perry. No. Mr. Perry votes aye. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Steen votes no. Mr. Garamendi votes no. Mr. Ronnie Davis of Illinois. Davis, Illinois votes no. Mr. Ronnie Davis of Illinois votes no. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. No. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes no. Mr. Kako. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Kako votes no. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Carson votes no. Mr. Babin. Ms. Titus. Ms. Titus votes no. Ms. Titus votes no. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves, yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes no. Mr. Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Bost. Aye. Mr. Bost votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Aye. Uh, Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Wilson of Florida votes no. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne is a no. Mr. Payne votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Mast. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Mast. 
Mr. DeSaunier. No. Mr. DeSaunier votes no. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes no. Mr. Carbajal votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Mr. Brown. Brown votes no. Mr. Brown votes no. Mr. Balderson. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. No. Mr. Malinowski votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes no. Mr. Stanton votes no. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes aye. Mr. Allred. No, no. Mr. Allred votes no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes no. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes no. Mr. Guest. Guest votes aye. Mr. Guest votes aye. Mr. Delgado. No. Mr. Delgado votes no. Mr. Nails. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes no. Mr. Pappas votes no. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes no. Mr. Lamb votes no. Ms. Maliotakis. Yes. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Moulton, no. Mr. Moulton votes no. Mr. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss, no. Mr. Auchincloss votes no. Mr. Menez. Mr. Menez votes aye. Mr. Menez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Votes no. Ms. Bardot votes no. Mrs. Steele. Mr. Kahale. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahale. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes no. Ms. Strickland votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes no. Ms. Newman. Newman votes no. Ms. Newman votes no. Mr. Carter. Mr. Young. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Babin. Babin votes aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Mr. Mast. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Lynch votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. No. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes yes. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Nails. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Kahale. Mr. Carter. Carter's no. Mr. Carter votes no. Does any member wish to change a vote or be recorded? Any member wish to be recorded or change a vote? Oh, Mr. Burchett, I'm sorry. That's all right, ma'am. My, my melodious voice just doesn't carry as far as it used to. Am I, I would like to be recorded as a yes on that. Mr. Burchett is recorded as an aye. Anybody else? The clerk will report the vote. Madam Chair, on this vote, there are 23 yeas and 39 noes. The amendment is not agreed to.
The question is now on the adoption and favorable reporting of H.R. 5547 as amended to the House of Representatives. All of those in favor, unmute yourselves and signify by saying aye. 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 All, those, aye. all those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Madam Chair, I request the last recorded vote. A recorded vote has been called. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. DeFazio. No. No. All right, let's, let's clarify what we're voting on. The question is on the adoption and favorable reporting. Oh, sorry. I, Madam Chair, sorry. I heard the word Mr. Perry, and as soon as I hear the word Mr. Perry, I say no. <laughs> we appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. There are a lot of people who are tending in that direction. Uh, okay, <laughs> everybody got that clear? It's H.R. 5547, uh, uh, final passage. Mr. Fazio votes aye. aye. Mr. Graves of Missouri. Mr. Graves of Missouri votes aye. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Young. Ms. Johnson of Texas. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Ms. Johnson of Texas votes aye. Mr. Crawford. Crawford, yes. Mr. Crawford votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington. Larson votes aye. Mr. Larson of Washington votes aye. Mr. Gibbs. Gibbs, yes. Mr. Gibbs votes aye. Ms. Napolitano. Napolitano, which vote is this now? Madam Chair? Is this final passage or Perry? Uh, 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 I'm sorry. It's final passage of HR 5547. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, Ms. Napolitano Thank votes you. aye. Mr. Webster. Everybody brought their A game today. Mr. Webster votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Massey. Massey votes no. Massey votes no. Mr. Ceres. Um, Mr. Perry. Tomorrow's Perry schedule, which is up, up in the air. Mr. Garamendi. Aye. Mr. Garamendi votes aye. Mr. Rodney oh, Davis, man. Illinois. Davis, Illinois votes aye. Mr. Ronnie Davis of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Carson, sorry. Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Aye. Mr. Johnson of Georgia votes aye. Mr. Catco. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Carson votes aye. Mr. Babin. Babin, aye. Mr. Babin votes aye. Ms. Titus. Titus votes aye. Ms. Titus votes aye. Mr. Graves, Louisiana. Graves is yes. Graves is yes. Mr. Graves, Louisiana votes aye. Mr. Maloney of New York. Mr. Maloney votes yes. Mr. Maloney of New York votes aye. Mr. Rouser. Aye. Mr. Rouser votes aye. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Bost. Mr. Bost votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee, aye. Mrs. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas. Weber votes aye. Mr. Weber of Texas votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. LaMalfa. LaMalfa, aye. Mr. LaMalfa votes aye. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Payne votes aye. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. Mast. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. Mast votes aye. Mr. DeSaunier. Aye. Mr. DeSaunier votes aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gallagher votes aye. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick votes aye. Mr. Carbajal. Carbajal votes aye. Mr. Carbajal votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Brown votes aye. Mr. Balderson. Mr. Balderson votes aye. Mr. Balderson, Balderson votes, aye. votes aye. Mr. Malinowski. Aye. 
Mr. Malinowski votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stanton. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Stanton votes aye. Mr. Burchett. Mr. Burchett votes no. Mr. Allred. Mr. Hold on. Yeah, aye. Mr. Allred votes aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas. Davids votes aye. Ms. Davids of Kansas votes aye. Mr. Van Drew. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Van Drew votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Garcia of Illinois votes aye. Mr. Guest. Guest votes no. Mr. Guest votes no. Mr. Delgado. Aye. Mr. Delgado votes aye. Mr. Nails. Mr. Pappas. Pappas votes aye. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Ms. Mace. Mr. Lamb. Lamb votes yes. Mr. Lamb votes aye. Ms. Maliotakis. Yes. Ms. Maliotakis votes aye. Mr. Moulton. Moulton aye. Mr. Moulton votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Mr. Auchincloss. Auchincloss aye. Mr. Auchincloss votes aye. Mr. Jimenez. Jimenez, yes. Mr. Jimenez votes aye. Ms. Bardot. Bardot votes aye. Ms. Bardot votes aye. Mrs. Steele. Steele votes aye. Mrs. Steele votes aye. Mr. Kahele. Yes. Kahele votes yes. Mr. Kahele votes aye. Ms. Strickland. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Strickland votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Williams of Georgia votes aye. Ms. Newman. Mr. Carter. It votes aye. Ms. Newman votes aye. Mr. Carter. Carter votes aye. Mr. Carter votes aye. Mr. Young. Mr. Ceres. Mr. Kako. Mr. Nails. Ms. Mace. Ms. Van Dyne. Does any member wish to change a vote or be recorded on this vote? Nice. How is Huffman recorded? I'm sorry? How is Huffman recorded? Mr. Huffman is recorded as I. That's correct. Thank you. Madam Speaker, how was uh, Mr. Kako recorded? Mr. Kako is not recorded. Uh, I, Mr. Kako votes yes. Mr. Kako votes aye. Okay. Any other members? I would point out that uh, the person who requested this vote left early, so apparently one. Sorry about that, folks. I'm all set to go now. I apologize. I had to cast one more vote for the day, so. Apologize. Okay. I wasn't talking about you, Mr. Jackson. Okay. All right. Will the clerk please report the vote? Madam Chair, on this vote, there were 60 yeas and four noes. The ayes have it. The bill is approved and ordered reported favorably to the House. Uh, I, I thank y'all for your patience and especially our clerks. But before we conclude today, I will take this opportunity. I've just been told that Mr. Mike Twincheck is leaving us. I hope it just wasn't because of today's hearing, but we are very sad about that. You've been a wonderful clerk. You've worked so hard so many times for this committee, but at least we know that you won't be a stranger because you're just going to be the uh, the chief clerk in the, in the house clerk's office for legislative operations, is that right? So we congratulate you on that, and we certainly thank you, and we'll miss you, but we'll see you wearing a different hat. Thank you very much. I now ask unanimous consent that each bill ordered reported today will be reported as a single amendment in the nature of a substitute incorporating any amendments adopted. Without objection, so ordered. <laughs>
I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make all necessary technical, clarifying, and conforming changes to each of the bills ordered reported today to reflect the actions of the committee. Without objection, so ordered. Pursuant to House Rule 22, Clause 1, I ask unanimous consent that the chair and or his designee be authorized to offer such motions as may be necessary in the House to go to conference with the Senate on the legislation opted to, uh, adopted today or any sim similar measure, and we hope that they'll bother to take it up. Without objection, so ordered. I ask unanimous consent that the chair, after consultation with the ranking member, has authority to strike or revise any provision of the bills ordered reported today that would cause a sequential referral to another committee or that would cause the bills or concurrent resolutions to be subject to a budget act or rule 21 PAYGO point of order. Without objection, so ordered. Pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2L, members have at least two calendar days in which to fill in, file any supplemental minority, additional, or dissenting views on the legislation adopted today. Pursuant to Rule 6 of the Rules of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, the chair notes the presence of a quorum for actions taken on all committee business today. With that, the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure has completed its business and the committee is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.